Hi, my name is Dr. Li Xing Chang, and I'm an associate physician and endocrinologist at Brigham and Women's Hospital in Boston, Massachusetts. In this video, we'll be talking about GLP-1 receptor agonists and their use in weight loss. Key takeaway points from this video are to understand indications, contraindications, and cautions for use of GLP-1 receptor agonists in weight loss, and to understand the dosing, administration, and side effects of GLP-1 receptor agonists when used for weight loss. Liraglutide and semaglutide are approved as an adjunct to a reduced calorie diet and increased physical activity for chronic weight management in adults with an initial BMI or body mass index in the obesity category, which is considered at least 30 kilograms per meter squared, or the overweight category, with at least one weight-related comorbid condition, such as hypertension, type 2 diabetes, or dyslipidemia. There are several conditions to be aware of that are contraindications or reasons to be cautious about GLP-1 receptor agonist use. MEN2, which stands for multiple endocrine neoplasia 2, or medullary thyroid cancer, abbreviated as MTC, are contraindications for use. This is because in a rat model, that was used to study GLP-1 receptor agonists. GLP-1 receptor agonists were associated with an increased risk of C-cell cancer, such as that seen in MEN2 or medullary thyroid cancer correlates in humans. This has not been definitively shown in humans, but because of this finding in the rat model, there remains a warning for use of GLP-1 receptor agonists in these populations. Pregnancy is also a contraindication for use of GLP-1 receptor agonists because there are insufficient data on their safety for use in pregnancy. There are also several conditions to be aware of for which GLP-1 receptor agonists should be used with caution. In patients with known or active gallbladder disease, caution should be exercised because GLP-1 receptor agonists are associated with a higher risk of gallbladder-related adverse events, including cholecystitis and cholelithiasis. In patients with a history of pancreatitis, GLP-1 receptor agonists should also be used with caution because some studies showed a potential increased signal for adverse pancreatitis-related events, although this has not been definitively proven. In patients with retinopathy, GLP-1 receptor agonists have been associated with an increased risk of adverse retinopathy outcomes. This is thought to be related to the rapid decrease and improvement in glucose in patients treated with GLP-1 receptor agonists. Consider consulting with a patient's optometrist or ophthalmologist if you're considering starting a GLP-1 receptor agonist in someone with retinopathy. GLP-1 receptor agonists can delay gastric emptying, and this is a reason for caution for use in patients with gastroparesis or delayed gastric emptying as GLP-1 receptor agonist use can potentially worsen symptoms of gastroparesis. And finally, in patients who are on concurrent insulin or insulin secretagogues, such as sulfonylureas, you should be aware of GLP-1 receptor use because it may be associated with increased hypoglycemia risk. In and of themselves, GLP-1 receptor agonists have a low risk of hypoglycemia, but when used in combination with medications that can cause hypoglycemia, GLP-1 receptor agonists may potentiate hypoglycemia risk. In a patient who has well-controlled diabetes who's on insulin or sulfonylurea, consider proactively reducing the insulin and or sulfonylurea doses when starting a GLP-1 receptor agonist. Let's turn to the practical use and administration of GLP-1 receptor agonists. Liraglutide and semaglutide for weight management are both subcutaneous injections given in the abdomen, the thigh, or the upper arm. If doses are given in the abdomen, generally we recommend at least two inches away from the belly button. They can be given in the front of the thighs or the posterior upper arms, and the upper arm is a particularly good location if another person is helping administer the injection. Both medications come in pens, but there are some important differences between the pens. Liraglutide contains multiple doses per pen, while semaglutide for weight management comes in a one-time use pen. Liraglutide requires a separate pen needle to be used each time an injection is given. This is screwed on at the end of the pen and disposed of after each use. Be aware that the pen needles for liraglutide need to be prescribed and purchased separately from the pen prescription. Semaglutide has an auto-injector mechanism where the pen needle is built in and automatically retracts after use. 
To set the dose for liraglutide, the pen has a dial that can be twisted to the appropriate dose. In comparison, semaglutide for weight management has a preset dose per pen. For both liraglutide and semaglutide for weight management, the dose should be started at the lowest dose and slowly titrated up. Higher doses are associated with higher weight loss, but also with a greater risk of gastrointestinal side effects. For liraglutide, the daily dose is typically increased by one increment every one week, as shown here. If a patient is doing well with the medication, they should reach the maximum dose of 3 mg daily by week 5. For semaglutide, the weekly dose is typically increased by one increment every four weeks, as shown here. If a patient is doing well with the medication, they should reach the maximum dose of 2.4 mg weekly by week 17. Note that with semaglutide, a new prescription is needed for each new dose because the pens are pre-filled with a single dose. For your information, the colors in the semaglutide section here match the actual pen colors. Gastrointestinal side effects are very common with GLP-1 receptor agonists. These are likely due to the central nervous system effects on decreasing appetite, as well as the gastrointestinal effects on slowing gastric emptying. Side effects are particularly common after the initial dose and within the first four or so weeks of medication initiation. They typically subside with continued doses of the medication. And these side effects can include nausea and vomiting, abdominal pain, bloating, constipation, or on the opposite end, diarrhea, early satiety, and heartburn. It can be very helpful to set expectations with a patient and give them anticipatory guidance about these common gastrointestinal side effects. They tend to be mild to moderate, transient, and dose dependent. That's why we start low and go slow with up titration of the medications to get the body used to each new dose of the medication. These gastrointestinal side effects typically improve over the first few weeks, for example, the first four to six weeks of use. Giving patients tips can also be helpful to reduce the risk of these side effects. For example, eating smaller portions, counseling them to stop eating before they feel full, avoiding fried, greasy, or oily foods, which may be more likely to trigger some of these side effects, and staying well hydrated with water. Use of GLP-1 receptor agonists for weight management and treatment of overweight and obesity is a very hot topic, and it's worthwhile to be on the lookout for ongoing studies as the field is rapidly evolving. I've highlighted a few specific areas to be aware of in the coming years here. Cardiovascular outcomes trials are underway for weight loss medications, such as the SELECT trial for semaglutide to assess the cardiovascular safety with weight loss pharmacotherapy. Additionally, several novel classes of medications incorporating GLP-1 receptor agonists have shown significant promise for weight loss. Twinkretins are combination GLP-1 receptor agonists with GIP receptor agonists, and GIP is gastric inhibitory peptide, which is also known as glucose-dependent insulinotropic polypeptide. Combining GIP with GLP-1 receptor agonists seems to result in even greater weight loss, and the first SURPASS series of trials was published in 2021, showing significant weight loss with this. Finally, two other molecules in combination with GLP-1 receptor agonists seem to also have potential roles in weight management. These are amylin analogs and glucagon receptor agonists. For example, cagrilantide is a long-acting amylin analog that is being studied in combination with semaglutide and shows promising initial results. Of note, terzepatide and cagrilantide have not yet been FDA approved for use. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this topic helpful.